O God, how great thou art. How great, O God, you are. Father, we thank you for your abiding presence with us. We thank you for a new day, O God. We hallow this day, O God. We hallow your name. King of kings, Lord of lords, eternal one. Oh, the king of glory, the omnipotent one, the omniscient one. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in this place. Demonstrate your power. Demonstrate your power. Your kingdom come. Lato buta katata tamalete mosita. Your will be done in our lives, in this land, as it is in heaven. Let your will be done. May signs and wonders follow the sharing of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Before you sit down, go to three people and prophesy to them. Speak into their lives. Say good morning. That's one of the greatest prophecies ever. Declare to them that their morning is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, beautiful people. You're all looking great. Thank you again for having me. Thank you for giving me such an awesome experience. It's been an experience for me, and I really want to thank Apostle Prince and Apostle Love for and have the leadership of this church. Great people. You're just amazing. It's been an experience for me, and certainly a new beginning. God always has a location, and I want to thank him that this has been the location that I may believe again. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm here to speak on a subject matter that I haven't spoken on for decades. And I believe that I'm, um, I've been sent to speak into space and time, that I've been sent to speak into what exists Oh, so I want you to pay careful attention to the words that will come from the throne room of God this morning. I'm only going to be uh, quick, but I'm bringing you uh, a sound from heaven and a sound of heaven. And I pray that it will become your reality and that you will become burden bearers of the assignment that God is given you that I'm about to introduce to you. When I came my very first session, I declared that there will be a um, sign from the weather pattern. Before I left, I have a suitcase filled with 
um, kind of winter stuff. <laughs> the weather um, forecast wasn't going to be very kind until Monday. But I'm glad that it, it, it changed, it turned, and I'm glad to see the sun shining. I'm glad that the Lord is speaking to us to tell us that behold, he is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. You're very quiet this morning. Can I hear that? Hallelujah in a very loud way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah meaning halal, praise to God, Jah. Hallelujah. I once had an assignment to teach on seven levels of praise. Uh, seven, <laughs> seven Hebrew words that describe praise. And uh, we're right in that. <laughs> and um, it, it, it's amazing. So halal. Hallelujah is the third level of um, praise when we begin to feel the presence of God and uh, where we have come from, you know, coming into his presence with all our, our issues, okay? And that's at our Toda level and we've got all our issues and we're still full of the things that we've come in and Toda and our hands just like that. And as the amazing worship team you know continue to lead us and you know get us you know uh, accustomed to the presence of God because sometimes we're calling the presence of God like he departed you know what I'm saying <laughs> but they're trying to get us to understand that we carry his presence and his presence abides in his temple we haven't got to call you know what I mean the presence of God come like he left us the Holy Spirit left us the devil is a liar <laughs> you know where I break that and destroy that often mindset and often spirit, that thing that says what you have, you know, as an inheritance is gone, you've got to invite it, you've got to invite it back. The presence of God is here, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. The presence of God abides here. So we go from that Toda level, you know, and we <laughs> become, because we, you know, we got to be real in his presence because, you know, nakedness before him, nothing is hidden. So we go from that Toda level and we begin to go into the Zama level. So our hand begins to open up like that. And then the presence of God is hitting us because you know what? We've separated ourselves from the affairs of this life. And if you just kind of reference Second Timothy 2, 4, and in your private time, you can look at that. So we're just separating from the affairs of this life and, and beginning to connect to where we are. And that begins to take us to the halal level. That's why I say someone shout hallelujah here. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. So, you know, some of the Caribbean churches then has some real big mummies and you just hear them say hallelujah you know hallelujah and you think you know what it is is that they're connecting with that presence you know these are women and men who have known who walk with God who know the presence of God and they just shout hallelujah Reke Busatahanda acknowledging the presence of the Holy Spirit and they go from the halal level into the Zama level <coughs> And the Zama level is uh, when you are clamorously foolish before God. That's what it means. And that's what David was doing. Remember when he was bringing back the ark. That every seventh step he stopped to sacrifice to God. And he danced and his wife began to mock. And then she, be, she got a curse of leprosy. So we got to be careful how when people are having fun in the presence of God. That we don't judge them. We really have to remember the only tabernacle that God said he will build back is the tabernacle of David. Hallelujah. With unrestrained worship. No bureaucracy. And we can just be ourselves in the presence of God. So the Zama level is when your heart begins to play the guitar, string instruments, you know, how you feel, Kalabu Sakata. Because in reality, the worship and the instrumentalist should be playing to the movement of our worship, not them uh, making us 
move how our expression of God in us should really determine how the string instruments go. So we go from the Hazama level and we enter into the Barak level. And that's where all knees must bow. Now you can't take it. Now you're in the reality of the glory of God in the house of God. And you can't just stand. You can't just be dignified. And so the Barak level is when the knee bows to the Lord. And what about the sixth level? the human tongue can offer to God to heal her. So all of the Psalms put together are called to heal you. This is the, the level, the, the life of David. Hey, David, that is, can you imagine? Healer level, that's the highest praise you can give God. Can somebody give a shout here? Lebroko sekete. And then can someone say something in human tongue to God that expresses your tehillah? Can someone do that right now? Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. And your mercies endure forever. You are good. And your mercies endure forever. That was the weapon that Jehoshaphat and Judah went to war with. Lord, you are good. And your mercies endure forever. Guess what the seventh level is? Lebro <laughs> kosekete. No human tongue can articulate because you come into this place that I got into on Friday what do you say to the Lord when he had turned your morning into rejoicing it is a shout level you can't do anything it's when the awe of God hits you and all you can do is ah! and all you can do is ah! shout up a hand wow Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Turn your Bible to Luke chapter 5, please. We honor you, Father. We honor you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, the title of my message, I'm going to very quick, is uh, Stoking the Flames of Revival. The Fire of Revival. Okay? And I have a subtitle. The boat, the net, and the catch. The boat, the net, and the catch. So here's the region of the word. So it was, Luke chapter 5. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. That he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And saw two boats standing by the lake. For the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught, no caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word. I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Father, I ask, oh God, that again you bless the sharing of your word. Lord, I ask, oh God, that signs and wonders will follow the sharing of your word in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be giving you nine power grids. Nine, I'm going to give you opening up a power grid of revival for you. So I will be giving you nine keys and nine P's of preparing for revival. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm not talking about something that is, you know, far away from you, but something that is with you, is already with you, is already in your atmosphere. 
So how do you work with this? So the number one is the power of proximity. Can we begin to look at that? The power of proximity. The Bible tells us in this text that it was that the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. And he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. So here you see a people that were hungry for, uh, for development, for hearing. They were hungry for revival. Something was happening in the atmosphere, right? So they were hungry. They were ready. They were prepared. And they were pressing in. Luke six, um, um, 16 verse 6 tells us about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, those that are expecting revival. There is, um, there is a, a preparation of the atmosphere for God. We saw how David, when he became king, realized that until that time, in the days of Saul, they had not inquired of the Lord. There was a distance between them and God. Other things had come between, between them and God. And when, the, when he came into fulfillment, anointed three times, when he finally ascended the throne, he said, I've got to go bring the ark because we have not inquired of God since the days of Saul. He says there's something we lost, right? And so hopelessness has come you know, into the space that we created by, not we, that was created in the regime of Saul, in the time of Saul, in the reign of Saul. Saul represents what God has rejected. Saul represents uh, uh, what God's departed from. We don't want to be with what God's departed from. We don't want to endorse what God is not with. There is a new season that has come upon the people of God. I don't know if someone believes that maybe you can say a very loud amen, which means let it be so. There is a shift, even though it looks like the world is turning upside down. Matthew 24, 16, Jesus says, see that you are not troubled. Oh, la basica tam. And um, he begins to tell us in Luke uh, chapter 6, Jesus, um, uh, 16, 16, um, 16 about the kingdom of God. He says the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time the kingdom of God has been preached. And everyone is pressing into it. So today as the kingdom of God is being preached. We got to press into it. So we see a people that were pressing into the kingdom of God. Okay. They were ready to hear the word of God. And Jesus was in the location. Uh, we are at a generation where people. People are no longer wanting to hear the word of God. People are no longer tolerant of the word of God. People are no longer willing to sit to give the time to the word of God. All they want to hear is prophecy. All they want to hear is what's going to happen tomorrow. So we have become an immature and fearful people. But the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, 6, that with our faith it is impossible to please God. He tells us that he who comes to God must believe that he is. We've got to believe that he is. In Matthew 24 and verse 14, Jesus begins to teach us that this gospel of the kingdom, this gospel of the kingdom, not gospel of prophetic ministry, not gospel of prophetic ministry, but this gospel of the kingdom, the full gospel, must first be preached in all the earth as a witness uh, is somebody excited here there is a prescription we've got to go back to when you miss your way you have to go back like the prodigal we have been like the prodigal no wonder there is no power in the church uh, and yet Paul says the kingdom of God uh, is not in word but is in power we've got to go back to our inheritance uh, we have to go back to the place where as we are gathered here there is a expectation of miracles. There are, there are towels uh, to dry tears uh, off the faces. Uh, there, are, there are expectations of healings, uh, probably coffins, uh, because we expect the dead to rise. Uh, why is the evidence of your expectation? Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. The word of God is settled in heaven. The word of God is a light to our path. It is a lamp to our feet forever and ever. We understand it is settled in heaven. Malakasi katam. The word of God cannot return to him. Oh, Laba, when we speak it, Isaiah 50, uh, 55 verse 11 makes us understand that he cannot return empty. That is the word of God. He cannot return empty. He goes and accomplishes that for which it was sent. Not only does it accomplish it, the word of God says it prospers in that thing. So not when you declare the word of God, you activate angels that are excelling strength. Because even angels only hear the voice of his word. Angels hear the voice of his word. We've got to go back to the word of God. So the first in the power of greed is the power of proximity. The power of acceptance even. The power of return. Breaking free from the prodigal and often a state that we have found ourselves in. So the people were ready. They were prepared. They wanted something new. They were ready. Hallelujah. The second one is the power of atmosphere. I'm not going deep with this because I want to be very quick and be able to pray for someone. The power of atmosphere. Whatever atmosphere you're under begins to affect you. And we can also reference um, the experience of Elisha when he came into that town, Second Kings chapter 2. He all looked like everything was going fine but there was a problem and we call this organized chaos there was a status it was organized chaos and I began to open this to you yesterday that that is similar with your climate it is so lovely here you don't want to do anything it's just so wonderful and it is lovely lovely it is not like a, you can't even tell that maybe the, the enemy has you know placed uh, us in the state it is so lovely or you I wanted to do sleep and just really have fun. Lovely, lovely, lovely. But beneath that loveliness, there is a need to fight. There is a need to stoke of flames of revival. There is a need to ignite revival. There is a need to move things forward. There is a need to believe that you're right in something that you have prayed for for at least 20 years. And the yes of God is with you right now. The yes of God is with you right now. The yes of God is with you. Kalaka, his possibility is with you. His gasoline is here. The fuel is here. And that is the Holy Spirit that powered the engine of Elijah's body to cause him to outrun the chariots of Ahab. Many times we're focused on the chariots of Ahab. And the young prophet began to, uh, uh, to call us uh, uh, into a new place. And he began to tell us that when even it looks like God is not working, that is when he's doing the most. That's when he's working. And we've got to believe that. So we have to understand that we have to move from our pastoral disposition into our apostolic nature. Apostolic disposition. So we begin to understand that we have to become territorial church. We have to become territorial as, as a territorial force and army, as an ecclesia. That Jesus said, watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. Psalm 125 verse 3 says, the scepter, the rod of wickedness will not rest upon the land allotted to the righteous. That you have to agree with God that this land has been allotted to you. The street where you live is your allotment. Because if you don't get the concept uh, of allotment, then you're not going to come into stewardship, right? You're not going to come into your status as an heir. You're not going to look after your father's inheritance. Just, does someone understand what I'm, where I'm going here? You're going to operate in a tenant mindset and mentality and not that of a freehold owner. You're not going to believe uh, the words of Psalm 24 verse 1 that the earth is the Lord's and all of its fullness, and the people that dwell therein. You're not going to be able to take up your position, which should be your natural habitat, in the heavenly places. Ephesians 3.10 tells you, that's got to be the posture, Kaleba Sikata, of the end time people, that we 
become a people that know how to govern from the heavenly places. Hallelujah. We know how to administrate from the heavenly places to the intent that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to principalities and powers in the heavenly places. And the Greek word for manifold there, translated into English, means the multifaceted wisdom of God, multidimensional wisdom of God, multi-hued wisdom of God. His wisdom is black. His wisdom is white. His wisdom is in between. It's every shade. It's every color. It's not deposited in one person. It's not deposited in a gender or race. That the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to principalities and powers in the heavenly places by the church. No other agency. And so we see here that the atmosphere of the place was already, you know, uh, 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 existed atmosphere of hopelessness. And the master comes into this atmosphere of hopelessness. And that takes me to the third power, power of conversion. Power of conversion. And right now, it's not God will do it, it is you. I'm bringing you the power greed of revival, right? So now, the master comes in. Verse 3 says, then he got into one of the boats. Remember verse 2, he saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. They'd given up for the day. Verse 3, then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitudes. You know, sometimes you got to say shift. Can somebody say shift? Uh, you got to shift. You have to have a mental shift, uh, an emotional shift, uh, physical shift. Uh, you even have to shift from people so that you can come into purpose. So Jesus said, you just shift uh, from that place of comfort, from what you have believed because something is about to happen. You have to shift. And so he said, look, just shift. Go back into that place that you had gone away from, you'd given up from. Because right there, remember, where, right where the 450 prophets of Baal could not ignite anything. They could not connect with their God. Right there, the Bible says, Elijah repaired the altar that was broken down by Jezebel. Right there, the altar was. But they could don't see it. Divination cannot see. Malek is when you become a territorial governing church, when you take up your posture, your position, your inheritance, your title as an heir, Lebosika Tamahanda Baba. Divination, the eyes of divination will be blinded. The enemy cannot see the glory. The enemy cannot go past the blood. Lebro Koseke Mahanda Baba. He can't. Um, so the power of conversion begins to work right there. You see it. Right there where there was hopelessness, there was hope. Uh, and Romans chapter 4 verse 20 tells you that of our patriarchal father. Somebody said, take me back to the old ways. Uh, take me back to the ancient paths. Uh, Reba, can somebody shout that at me? Prophesy it. Take me back to the ancient paths. Uh, is there a hungry believer here? Is there a hungry saint here. Can you cry out to the Holy Spirit? Take me back to the ancient parts. The Bible tells us that God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Here is our patriarchal father. He says, Abraham, who contrary to hope, in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be. There was a word that was existing. A word of prophecy. This is the word of prophecy. Genesis to Revelation is the word of prophecy. The patriarchal father, contrary to hope, in hope he believed so that he became the father of many nations. Uh, verse 18, uh, because there was an existing promise. There was an existing promise. The patriarchal father located that promise. Contrary to hope, uh, ho contrary to hope, contrary to his physical state, uh, contrary to probably his state of mind, contrary to his physiology. In hope, because he knew that God who promised him is not man that he should lie. 
nor is he the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and not done? Has he promised and not fulfilled? Hebrews 3 says that God be true and every man a liar. So in hope, contrary to hope, in hope he believed. So that he became a the prophecy fulfilled. Somebody, you are about to become prophecy fulfilled. Somebody, you are about to become prophecy fulfilled. Proverbs 22, 28 says, do not remove the ancient landmarks laid by your fathers. Where we have removed the ancient landmarks laid by fathers of faith, laid by mothers of faith, laid by revivalists, laid broken. When we have become a comfortable people, a people of comfort, a people of falsehood, a people who speak ease in Zion, the Lord is calling us by his spirit to return back to the ancient parts so that we become prophecy fulfilled in a world of chaos and crisis. And so Jesus comes into that, in that, into that state, atmosphere of hopelessness and the power of conversion begins to work. For we serve a God that calls those things that be not as though they are. And we are a people that have been given a mandate to call those things that be not as though they are. Indeed, in the dialogue of God with Job, God begins to ask Job. And this is in 38, chapter 38. And I believe it's verse 33. And God began to ask Job a very important question. It is so apostolic, it has to become part of your, uh, your value system. And so God began to ask Job an important question. And you have to tie this question to the posture, I believe, is the posture of the end time ecclesia. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. He says, do you know the ordinances of the heavens? Can you set their dominion over the earth? Do you know the laws of heaven by which your nation was made and is to operate? That's what God was asking. Do you know the systems that run the heavens over where you are? And do you know how to set their dominion over your town and your territory? Because if we follow the word of God, which is immutable, which cannot return void, which is Christ, the hope of our God glory, if we follow the word of God, Acts 17, 26 tells us you are planted right where you are by God, who has determined your pre-appointed times and the boundaries of your dwelling. So if the boundaries of your dwelling has been determined by God, so you are his placement right where you are. And you're his placement to fulfill the corporate purpose, the corporate vision, the mandate of the entire church. Those who will believe, those who have believed, there is one mandate. Go ye into the world. Preach the gospel to all creation. Go ye, disciple the nations. Bring heaven where you are. So that his will begins to become the new normal. His will becomes the new normal. That is all. And he never said, you know, go into a fight with this. He said in John 12, if you lift my name high above the earth, I will draw men. Unto me. That's what the word says. Somebody said take me back to ancient path. Somebody said take me. Is anyone hungry for revival? Awakening? Can somebody say take me back to ancient parts? You're saying take me back to your word. Oh God. Take me back to your word. For your word is your way. For your word is you. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
Hallelujah. So the power of conversion, the atmosphere began to change because the master of atmosphere has come into the place. So where you live, the atmosphere should respond to what you carry and you're not to respond. Many Christians say, well, I don't get, I don't dream. I don't feel these things. I don't know whether there is a devil. Remember that the word of God says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Lebrokos, but the Lord delivers him from them all. You you got to check the state of your being. Do you understand? I'm not saying invite the devil to come, but I'm saying don't make it look like you are in such glory. You're so good. You're so perfect that you never see the enemy. What it is, is that's not even bothering with you. <laughs> You're not his bother, right? Come midnight, you become light. He's not, the amount of light that is coming out of your home is what actually attracts the demonic. Because they want to battle that light. They want to put out that light. So it is not really credit to you to keep boasting how you never see anything. You never feel anything. You need more word in you. And I'm talking about scripture. You need more word in you so you grow in light. Because according to Colossians 1.13, we were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of of the love of, of his son. And according to James 1 17, we were created by the father of by the father of we were created as light because we were created in his image and likeness. Created by the father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, nor any shadow of turning. Okay, Matthew 5 tells us that we got to be light, right? We have to be salt. We have to be light. So guys, let us go back to the ancient ways. Hallelujah. Let's take back our identity to who we are. So the fourth power here, power of perspectives. In a place of hopelessness, uh, in a place that needed conversion, in a place where they'd given up, now Jesus comes uh, and a, a, a perspective uh, of the fisherman begins to change. Hallelujah. Jesus stepped into the same boat that he had packed away. Jesus stepped into the same place uh, because the miracle was waiting. Malakasikata, the atmosphere was ready and the enemy must not hijack it. Malakabusata, Isaka prophets were needed. Isaka apostles, Isaka teachers, Isaka evangelists, Isaka pastors to get the people sensitive to understand uh, that this is the decade of the saints. Uh, Daniel prophesied in chapter 7 and 22 that a time came for the saints to possess the kingdom this is that hour the time has come for the saints to possess the kingdom and we are talking about a people that have been made ready for the day of the lord a people that understand what happens in the day of the lord a people to fulfill revelation chapter 11 verse 15 if you never read the word you don't know what you're to fulfill that the kingdoms of this world you are the one to make sure that the scripture you are we're partnering with the seventh angel we understand the sound of heaven and how to receive it in our atmosphere revelation eleven fifty says then the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. So you possess it. He reigns forever and ever through you. Because Habakkuk the Old Testament prophet prophesied of a time like this. That the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. Not the knowledge of COVID-19. But the knowledge <laughs> of a people. A governing people. A people people who understand territorial authority, a people who understand government and governance, a people who understand administration, a people who understand realms, a people who understand power, a people who understand power greeds, a people who understand what God is doing, that from Red Deer, there is a power line of God going all the way to Glasgow, going all the way to Nigeria, going all the way to United States. Lebro 
Sekete. And there's a wisdom of God that is being moved through the pathways of God, spiritual routes of God. And that the enemy is trying to blow up those routes because we're all down here in our pastoral nature, speaking to one another, bothered about one another. And I hear the Lord say, come up higher. Power of perspectives. God asked Jeremiah, what do you see? Jeremiah 1.11. Zechariah testified of his experience. He said he was awakened by an angel. Like a man that was asleep. Somebody, God is awakening you. Labroko Sekete. And he's saying shift. And this is the experience of the fisherman. Let's go quickly. I'm almost done. So number five, power of alignment. Hallelujah. So power of alignment. Now, the man begins to align with the word of God, with the will of God. Hallelujah. We saw yesterday from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9 that we are in the era of people who must operate like people who understand the mystery of his will. That the will of God must be <laughs> something that you wear as a necklace. The will of God. You must be one that seeks to be in his will, to know his will at all times in the day that we're living in because there is so much distraction. There are so many sounds that are not really sound of God. In the time of the crossover, in the time of the shift from Moses to Joshua, Joshua was well instructed. And Joshua, a man well instructed, when they were about to cross the Jordan and begin that journey, jo Joshua warned the people of God. He says, only follow the priests that are carrying the ark. That is still relevant in our time. There's a shift and there are those that are carrying the ark and there are those that are operating in residual anointing. We've got to know which is which. Hallelujah. So the power of divine alignment, he begins to align with the word of God. He says, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Thank you so much. So we have toiled all night. He he comes, he, 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 he um, what's the word now? He, um, he comes face to face with reality, okay? So he identifies his reality. He, he's not faking it, right? He's saying, look, no, look, I've been in a bad place. You know, I, I, I mean, this is my enterprise. I'm a marketplace person. You know, my livelihood is, is, is really about catching fish. I'm a fishmonger. I'm a businessman. I've been out all day and look, low tide. I've caught nothing. Nevertheless, nevertheless, nevertheless. And that takes us to number six, power of obedience. Power of obedience. And so when you come to power of divine alignment, that is where the currency of faith, the currency of kingdom has to come into play. Now faith is substance. You may not have seen it, but you've seen the substance. You hold on to the substance. Because when you hold on to the substance, you will surely come into the evidence. Can you tell your neighbor that? Tell your neighbor, hold on to the substance. Hold on to the substance because you're about to come into the evidence. The evidence is the reality. Can you tell your neighbor that again? Someone to the other side of you. Can you tell them, hold on to the substance. Tell them. Yes, help them, encourage them, encourage them, encourage them. Tell them to hold on to the substance because you're about to come into the reality. Yes, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, right? Hold on to the substance. Tell them, hold on tight, 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 right? Right, right, right. Mary said, Jesus said, my hour has not come. But Mary said, look, in the very next verse, Mary said, that is John 2. Mary said, whatever he says to do, do. So he says, be ready, be ready, be ready. Remember Exodus 12, the end the Passover meal standing. Is somebody ready, 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 ready? Because we are the tipping point of a revival, a global revival, global awakening. Can somebody shout a very loud hey, hallelujah and amen. He said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Maleke Sikata. The evidence is about to become your reality. The evidence is with you in the name of Jesus Christ. So power of obedience here. Second Chronicles 20, 20. So believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe in his prophets. 
you shall prosper. Okay, so Romans 4, 20 and 17, we already saw it. Contrary to hope, Abraham believed. So you got to believe, believe. Your belief system is tied to the promise of God becoming your reality. Number seven of the power greed of revival, power of collaboration, power of collaboration. So he says, look, master, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down. I will try again. Wise man falls and gets up seven times. I will try again. I will go again. When Abraham left the home of Abimelech, okay, having lied. I love it where the Bible tells us this is in Genesis 13. So you go and, uh, and, and do your study. And the Bible tells us that Abraham, when he left Abimelech's realm, Abraham went back to the first altar that he built to God where he knew God. Is somebody going to say with me, Lord, take me back to the ancient parts. Take me back to where I believed. Take me back where everything was so simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes will not perish. God, take me back to the simplicity of the gospel of the kingdom therein lies the power therein lies the power god take me away from the gospel of the age take me back to the gospel of the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god for then you can give me the keys to the kingdom of heaven whatever i bind on earth you will bind in heaven tell your neighbor is that simple so power of collaboration, that begins to work. And when he obeyed, the Bible says, and when they had done this, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So remember, it was Simon that all this was going on around. But when it was time for the activity, they worked synergistically. The Bible begins to say, they, they. So they were there all the time. They were there all the time. But there was an apostolic figure. There was a leader of the move. There was someone who will drive the move. There was someone who will drive the value that was about to be created. There was someone that would lead it. So we have become a people, a rebellious people, a headless generation, a people who cannot, you know, tolerate accountability demands, our demands of accountability. We don't want to be accountable to people. We want to say, God told us, God said, God said, he said, I went up to heaven. Who was with you when you went? We don't know how you went. Did you go with British Airways? Did you go with Virgin Atlantic? What was the flight? Uh, the Lord told me, I went to heaven and I stood before God and the Lord said, and he hasn't even come to pass and no one's held you accountable and you go on to the next one can somebody say lord take me back to the ancient past take me back to the ancient past by the way i am talking to you about the boat the net and the catch power of collaboration power of collaboration remember we're a generation that must fulfill Revelation 11, 15, that the breakthrough that God is about to give you is going to be given to his people will come like kingdoms. There will be enough for so many people. Hallelujah. So in one breakthrough, an entire church system will be blessed. Can somebody say yes? So what does that mean? God is breaking that culture of selfishness, uh, being self-absorbed, self-centered, me, myself, and I. God is breaking that and he's bringing a new shape. There is a new formation. Hallelujah. Just like the early church, the apostolic pattern, Malika Sikata, is going to be so, you know, it's going to fill the earth where believers are. And even the very youngest will locate it. We will become intolerant to what is not of God, that what does not represent God, because then God is going to be able to build this house. God is building his house. And we are in the decade of the elevation of the house of God. So the power of collaboration. 
generation takes us to eight power of divine purpose. So God is interested in the outcome. He's interested in the result. He's interested in what comes out of it. So he says, and when they had done this, so they came together collaboratively. They put down the net. And when they'd done this, there was so much fish. Bible says in verse 10, so they signal to their partners in other boats to come and help them. Remember that was started with two boats, number of covenant, right? So covenant relationship is going to be very important in where the church is coming into. We're in the days of awakening. We're in the day of revival. We're in the day of reformation. We're in the day of transformation. I believe that three seasons are going to converge together to get us to where we have to be and to get us to a people. We have to be a governing territorial army that wherever we are, we we, are, we bring heaven to where we are. We bring the picture of love. We bring the picture of justice. We bring the picture of order. Not only do we bring the picture, we bring the demonstration of that which we are. So that takes us, you know, to the power of divine purpose. The purpose of God is what I've been saying to you, that we become community again. We know how to be apostolic prophetic communities. We know how to look out for one another. We know how to serve one another. Because if we don't know that in the house of God, how else are we going to be able to take it into society and teach society how to love one another? Because we have become a loveless people. We have become a people that are isolated. Our eyes are on our devices. We, are, we don't even know how to communicate so much anymore. We've got to learn how to be intimate again, how to communicate again, how to trust one another. We have to learn how to be comfortable with people we don't know. Oh, Karia Masakata. To align with people God is bringing into our lives that are not part of our comfort zone. People that are not part of our tribe, our tongue, our color, our gender. You know, these are new skills that we have to learn. On, yet they, this is our constitution. So we lost our way. And there is a call to restore the landmarks of righteousness. Yamasakata in the house of God. And that brings me to the final one. The power of discovery. So right there, Simon came with his reality. To his reality. Simon realized his weakness. Simon realized that he was a man that was sinful. Oh, Rabasikata. And the Bible says he fell down at Jesus' knees. Oh, Mandaba. That's how I feel right now. That's how I feel right now. That's how I feel right now. I feel like saying, Lord, I have uh, I've missed it, oh God. Lord, I'm no longer happy. I'm no longer satisfied with sharing your word. Maleke Sekete with a demonstration. I want to go to places where they welcome me with coffins. Where there is expectation of the dead. I have had a resurrection. Maybe between my ministry I can boast. Because Jeremiah 9 <laughs> tells you when you can boast. Not in your wisdom, not in your riches, not in your might. But that you understand and know him. Knowing him is knowing his will. That it is not the will of God that we have sermon after sermon after sermon and there is no demonstration of his power in the house of God and the world is in chaos and there is crisis everywhere and we're prophesying some more and the last prophecy hasn't come to pass oh we've got to get like Elijah we have to birth Elijah revolution we have to be a people that can hear the sound of abundance of rain and we can put our head between our knees and we can say go, 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 go for surely it will come. And Simon said, oh, he said, depart from me for I am a sinful man, oh Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. They couldn't believe that right there in that water was that much fish to change the economic situation of the entire region. They didn't believe that the next move was right there. They didn't believe that what can cause a change in government was right in the same water that they'd given him up on. The perspective changed. And the reality of the poverty. Poverty is not lack of fiscal money. Poverty is the lack of belief in who you are and whose you are. Rakasikata. Because we talk so much about corruption. Corruption is lack of revelation. 
of purpose and destiny. Where there is corruption. People have not known that you don't steal what is yours. You don't steal from yourself. So we have to teach this. Kalibo soko to mahandaya. That you don't steal from yourself. You don't steal what God's given you to build your nation. You don't steal what God's given you to confirm your sonship. So we don't just send Christians to government and politics. We equip them. We prepare them. Malika Basakara. To go through process. Like all the various ones we saw in the Bible. They went through process and they became the product. Father, we thank you for this day. And so the call and commission came when they came to terms. You see, God's ways and his thoughts are higher than ours. We have worked with our pattern and the young prophet was prophesying to us that we must not go by our ways. I'm rounding up now if you can just stand to your feet so I can begin to pray. And Luke chapter 5, verses 10 and 11 says, And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. Can you tell your neighbor, do not be afraid? From now on, can you tell your neighbor from now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to the land, they forsook all and followed God. Listen, God is about timing. God is about divine purpose. You don't be afraid. You don't feel ashamed. You don't feel, you know, unaccomplished. You don't feel like you never got it. All we have to pray is divine intervention. We have to pray that we understand seasons and times. For the Bible says to everything there is a season. A time for every work under heaven. We don't go into hope deferred. Hope deferred brings a sickness of the heart. But the Bible tells us that when the desire comes, okay, that is the stoking of the fire of revival. That is the stoking of the fire of what has been promised. He says when a time of fulfillment comes, it's very important that God's people are ready. Psalm 110 verse 3 says, uh, in the day of his power, we must be willing. He said in the day of his power, you must be a volunteer. Are there volunteers here? Raise your hands to heaven if you're a volunteer. If you're a volunteer of what must be in your land. If you're a volunteer of what God wants to do. If you're a volunteer. A volunteer is a partner. A volunteer is a burden bearer. A volunteer is one that is ready to forsake all. A volunteer is one that is ready to be of no reputation. A volunteer is one that is ready to go back to ancient landmarks, ancient pathways. La Broco him. So, Father, I want to thank you for your people for willing volunteers right here. Lord, we thank you for the power of conversion. We thank you for the fire of revival. We thank you for the fire of awakening. Oh, Lord, even as you ask Jeremiah, here you ask us. What do you see? Lord, I want to thank you for a shift in our perspective, oh God. I want to thank you for days of miracles again, oh God. Lord, I thank you for days of signs and wonders following the sharing of your word. Thank you, oh God, for your day. For upon Mount Zion there shall be. So, Father, we will not fear. We'll be anxious for nothing. And today, in all things, we come. We pray and supplication. Father, I hand them back to you, Lord. Even as you sent me, O oh God. Father, honor me, O oh God. Let your word be followed by signs and wonders. May warmth be open. Father, promises of God. Function, oh God, in your power, greed. May we, oh God, look of your power. May the voice of the blood of sprinkling that things and that of able to. May you people that understand and know how 
to set a dominion over your territory. Oh, la broko sekete. A people called by God. A people appointed. A people made ready. A people sent. This apostolic center purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, just stay where you are. While I sit and just connect with the Holy Spirit. Right? Connect with the Holy Spirit. Many of you, your ears are opening and you're hearing Spirit, Spirit of God. All right? Don't ask to be prayed for. Because that's an often thing. Believe right now. Can somebody shout, I believe. I believe. I believe. The centurion said, you don't need to come to my home. Just speak the word. You don't need to come to my home. You don't need to lay hands on me. Just speak the word. Can somebody ask for a love of the word of God? Can somebody ask for a love of the word of God again? Can somebody ask God? Because there's an existing promise from Jeremiah. That in the last days, you, no one is going to ask another word to teach them. That's not a, a sign of rebellion. It's talking about maturity. Is it because the word of God will be written on the tablets of our hearts? May the Lord bless each and every one of you. I am expecting great things to come out of this weekend. I have loved a lot. I have been a student in the school of the Holy Spirit. And I want to thank you for an incubation center. I want to thank you for a birthing place. I brought you nine peas in the power greed of revival. And nine is the number for birthing. Nine is the number for the supernatural. Nine is a number for development, preparation. There is nothing else to do but to begin to live in the glory and to dispense the glory wherever you are. His splendor, his dignity, his distinction, his wealth, all that glory means. So you're going to go into work tomorrow, weightier than you were. More confident. Because you're carrying the kabod, isn't it? You're carrying the weight of his glory. So you shouldn't be who left on Friday. You're going to have a happy demeanor. Because you're carrying his doxa. You're carrying his shekinah. His splendor. The glistening glory of God into work. And you're going to comfort those who are feeling low. Right? God bless you.